campaign today. Full-fledged, full-throttle support for working people and the unit movement. But I'm still very much against any form of racism and sexism and homophobia because I have a moral stand. Hey, y'all. This is Adam Keller with the Valley Labor Report, Alabama's only union talk show. And I'm here in Birmingham to interview a very special guest, someone who has long spoken truth to power, an activist, scholar, author, educator, intellectual, and most recently, candidate for president of the United States. Dr. Cornell West, thanks so much for your time. Brother Adam, it's a blessing for me to be here, and I salute the work that you do, force for good that you are. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, so we are a labor media project. We are dedicated to amplifying the voices of working class people here in the South. Uh, we're labor union activists ourselves. Our audience is mostly union members and, and allies. So I definitely want to talk to you about uh, organized labor and where we're at in that moment. But before we get there, could you tell us why are you running for president? And why should everyday people in the South, like myself, why should we pay attention? Well, one is because I'm already in solidarity with you. Before the campaign, that's just who I am as a human being. I choose to be in solidarity in terms of raising my voice, in terms of deed, in terms of living, and even in terms of dying for the least of these. And that includes the wretched of the earth, working people all around the world. So you see, as a Christian, I'm an international, so I'm concerned about working people everywhere. But I start on my side of town. I start in the United States. I start in my own neighborhood and so forth. But I believe in making strong connections to working people. And that's why I support not just the trade union movement, but especially those elements in the trade union movement that recognize that we've got to be able to come together across racial divides in order to render greedy bosses accountable. So I'm an abolitionist when it comes to poverty. Part of my anti-poverty program is eliminating right-to-work states. I want to make sure workers can organize more easily so they don't have to deal with the influence of the bosses when it comes to those various committees and labor relations connections and networks that make it difficult even for workers to make a choice, Right. just to make a choice, you see. So because I believe in the dignity and sanctity of everyone as a Christian, and believe in the 25th chapter of Matthew, the least of these means you begin with the prisoners, the orphans, the widows. You begin with the poor. You begin with those folk who have been pushed against the wall. Well, the history of the working class, the history of working people, Alabama, I live in Harlem, New York, <laughs> Middle East, Asia, Europe is what? Take the big profit, extract as much money, and keep the wages low and divide the workers by whatever means, by race, by gender, by religion, whatever it is. That's one of the way, very ways in which workers are able to reproduce what I understand to be an unjust system. And so wherever I go, I'm saying the same thing. Well, of course, I've been doing that for almost 45 years. You have, you have, and I respect that, and I respect your message of solidarity and interracial people power oh, you have and, and the ability of labor to transcend some of those divisions because a lot of times there's this false dichotomy that you choose social justice or you choose workers' rights. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. And, and, and we see that in our movement sometimes, and it, it's, it's so frustrating. Uh, but ultimately, the, the message of solidarity you're uplifting is, is really important. And so on, on the subject of labor, Labor has been on the decline for decades, right? Since before I was born, the labor movement has been going down. But since this pandemic, it seems like there is this renewed union energy happening in the country. And I'm curious, what do you make of this current moment for organized labor? And then what is your message as a candidate for mm -hmm. organized labor in 2024? Well, this is a moment of renaissance and awakening among the trade union movement. And it's a beautiful thing. It has one, one of the reasons has to do precisely what you said before in the country, but especially in the South, you see, the legacy of white supremacy has been one in which it's very difficult to bring together white and black workers the way you want. You've always had heroic vanilla brothers and sisters 
and heroic black brothers and sisters who have come together, but often they marginalized, crushed, lied on, misunderstood, misconstrued. Right now, part of the renaissance in the labor movement, I was just with Brother Sean Teamster. Uh, we met and had a long dialogue, and of course, with the UAW during the strike, with them twice in Detroit, as well as New York, with the other Sean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, where, what? the labor Sean. The, the two labor Sean. I should really say that. Both of them are serious, uh, magnificent leaders. But what, what is it when you look at their unions? You see more and more chocolate and vanilla folk working together, mm. bringing power and pressure to bear against those bosses. And see, I don't hate bosses, I hate greed. Mm. That's why Jesus ran out of the money, ran the money changes out of the temple. Right? He didn't hate the rich, he hated greed. And that for me is a model. You see, how do you fight against injustice without hating? others. And so even though there's been a relative decline in the last 50 years, we're living in a moment now where the bounce back is strong, from public sector and private sector. Right. And it's a beautiful thing to behold. We just have to make it more, more easy for uh, working people to organize. See, it's so early on, I mean, just the right to organize. I mean, the Democratic Party is supposed to sign that thing during the Obama years. Never got around to it. Right. He said, well, wait a minute, this is a major promise. Well, okay, we want, I'm not here to bring all my critique to bear on the milk toast neoliberals in the Democratic Party tied to militarism abroad. They tied to Wall Street. They tied to Silicon Valley. That's tied to the bosses. He said, well, how is it then that organized labor in its mainstream still support Democrats? Well, they say Republicans are worse. They're right. Republicans are worse on that particular issue, namely not being as bad as uh, 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 Republicans are not as bad, uh, but Democrats are not as bad as Republicans when it comes to some issues for labor. But when it comes to full-fledged support for labor, that's not the Democrats. That's what this campaign is about. This is a full-fledged, full-throttle support for working people and the trade union movement, but I'm still very much against any form of racism and sexism and homophobia because I'm, I have a moral stance. Now, this is not just playing politics. You see, you have to have a moral conscience about these things. Hey, five seconds. Just wanted to say that this is only possible because of our donors. If you want to see more of this, then consider donating yourself at tvlr.fm slash donate. Right. And, and I think what you're, you're, describing is that we can choose solidarity over bigotry absolutely it's a choice that we can make and, and the solidarity powers us to make the changes that we need to see and, and that is really what we believe on the valley labor report is like we need a mass working class movement oh, we need yes. the people power we haven't seen since the 30s through the 60s and we need that here in the south in particular because as you spoke about working people have been divided by wealthy powerful interests here and they have exploited and oppressed folks in the south for so long it is a refuge for this anti-union uh corporate model where we hand over the public treasury right and we promise low wages and we promise hostility to unions we promise no regulations low taxes and we, as working class people in Alabama, are living in one of the worst places in the developed world. Yeah, yeah. So I'm wondering, it's true. what do you do? You think, what do you think about the potential for that kind of mass working class people power here in the South that could bring that kind of transformation? And how do you see that relating to your campaign? Well, one of the things we have to do is to make sure that we intervene collectively, organizationally, and individually to help bring it about. It always looks like it's a David versus Goliath situation, but we have to make sure that we are in motion. We have to make sure we are working with fellow citizens and fellow human beings who are willing to sacrifice in solidarity, but a solidarity, as you said, that has moral content. You see, solidarity is not the same. It's just interest-based coalition. It's not just about interest. You see, I'm concerned about you, not just because of my interest. You're right. a human being. Right. You see, I'm concerned about workers, no matter what color, because I care. I'm concerned. That's solidarity. 
If it's just a matter of what my interests are, and I calculate my interest is not to care about you, then I go another way. Hey, that's spiritually empty to me. It's just too narrow. But think of this. We know Birmingham itself was founded in 1871 based on what? Bankers, railroad magnets, and steel mills. That's the, we are going to create a labor force that is non-unionized, that pits black and white workers against each other. Civil war is over. No Birmingham before the Civil War, right? right? I mean, so it's a different kind of South, right? It was industrial. So you see industrial capitalism already at work. And their aim was to what? Make sure profits are high, wages are low, and then fight against even the safety net for social services. Make sure those black and white folk going at each other tooth and nail. You know, 1871, right. brother. Just you and I just be shaking hands and saying, right, <laughs> you're getting a whole lot of trouble. Now, of course, there's an attempt to bring that back. I mean, that's part of what Trump is all about. Right. That's the fascism that, that, that we have to deal with. You have to be honest about that. Call it for what it is. But I just say that the fact that coming into Birmingham, I can see, on the one hand, those magnets, greedy bosses. And on the other hand, there's always been some courageous white and black sisters in Birmingham to tell the truth, organize against them, and push out of solidarity because they fight for something that's right and just and moral that makes all the difference in the world. And that's our heritage, too. Not just Confederate That's blacks, right. That's right. right. That is our heritage, too. That, that kind of interracial people power that's here exactly in Alabama. Right. That's exactly right. But Fred Shuttleworth is as American as the Ku Klux Klan, and morally and spiritually, he is superior to the Ku Klux Klan, but they both are as American as apple pie. Right, right. Very much so. Eddie Kendricks, too. <laughs> it's the great artist that he is coming out of Birmingham as well, but I just like to bring the culture and the music. Oh, absolutely. Because you know how important that is, and, too. Uh, oh, I, I just oh, have yeah. to say, since we're sitting here, uh, I'm a huge Sly Stone fan. Oh, Everyday people. I was just with Sly's so, daughter. <laughs> with Sly's daughter three years ago. Everyday people. So I, I do love that you bring that in to oh, the message. Oh, you on top of it. You on top of it, uh, Adam. So ten years ago, you wrote a book that I highly recommend to our listeners, "Black Prophetic Fire," and in it, you wrote, "quote that a new wave of young brothers and sisters of all colors see and feel that it is a beautiful thing to be on fire for justice." and that there is no greater joy than inspiring and empowering others, especially the least of these, the precious and priceless wretched of the earth. So I'm wondering now if you're seeing that wave of young brothers mm -hmm. and sisters oh, on fire for justice. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that, I wrote that before Ferguson. I wrote that right after Occupy Movement. I wrote that just prior to the magnificent mobilization resulted at public lynching of our dear brother, George Floyd Jr. And, uh, you know, on a very deep personal level, and you would testify to this as well, as a freedom fighter, you have a joy in struggling for what is right. Mm -hmm. And that's different than any of the pleasures that the society has to offer you or myself. That's crucial. People need to know that the struggle's about joy, and joy is a fruit of love and compassion and care and concern. American culture is primarily about pleasure. That's why so much of the culture is a joyless quest for insatiable pleasure. You can get every kind of pleasure you want, you still don't have any joy. Mm. You don't have nothing on the inside. When you're struggling with people in the rain, I don't know how much snow you have here, but we had a whole lot of snow in Detroit, in the snow. So, right. That's a joy. You're coming together. That solidarity is empowering you, taking you beyond just the routine of everyday life. There's a human connection there. That that's it's just exactly right. That's unique, and that shared struggle builds relationships. And relationships is how we feel progress. That's exactly right, go brother. So, and, and I just, I appreciate your emphasis on, on love oh, yeah. and, and the spiritual crisis that we experience in this country. And I'm, 
more of a materialist kind of guy and I try to look at things from that that point of view but I can't help but notice the spiritual yearning in this country yeah. and, and the despair in this country that people feel across artisan lines and geographic lines and racial lines it just seems like a a widespread despair in this country and with any time organized greed is in the driver's seat it's going to produce exploitation and despair institutionalized hatred is in the driver's seat it's going to produce despair and let us never forget the greatest lament ever produced in american culture john coltrane alabama Mm. responding to the deaths of the four precious girls of 16th Street Baptist Church. And in the trade union movement, you just listen to that music. You feel the love, the care, the concern, and it's spilling over to everybody, but he's zeroing in on those four precious girls. See? And you say, hmm, that's why we must support the trade union movement at its best. That's why we've got to have solidarity workers. That's why we got to keep these greedy bosses accountable so they don't push us. Fossil fuel can push us off the planet, given the greed. Or these, these the various other uh, uh, industries producing levels of wealth inequality and poverty. Listen to that music in the face of that kind of despair. Always love, care, concern, solidarity. See, that's a beautiful thing. Ooh, that's where the arts again play a crucial role. So you've spoken a little bit about it, but I, I did want to just say that you have a really bold platform on worker justice and economic justice. What would a pro-worker president look like? What could that look like? I'm, I'm just curious kind of what you're... Well, I would, I would make sure that uh, the, uh, the efforts to engage in a wholesale abolition of poverty, mm. abolition of homelessness, a minimum $27 minimum wage. I mentioned before, elimination of right to states, right to work states. It would be creative in terms of using all of the tools available for the empowerment of poor and working people. Mm -hmm. We've lived in a society in which the number one priority is not only profits, but of the 1% at the top. Live lives like kings and queens of the past. 62% of our fellow citizens doing what? Living paycheck to paycheck. Millions and millions of our fellow citizens could have one medical catastrophe and become homeless right. because of our market-driven healthcare system rather than free healthcare. Right. Those are the kind of priorities. But the important thing is two, two some my brother Adam. One, vision. Mm -hmm. And the other is courage. Have to have follow through. Most of our politicians, too spineless, man. Right. They're just too spineless. They're either bought off by the powers that be, or they just might as well be, right? Might as well be. In a way, that's probably the best way of putting it. I don't know. There's a certain spinelessness among our political class. It comes in all colors. Now, that's not all of them, but it's too many. It's too, too many. many. Absolutely. Too many. Well, I want to give you the opportunity to share some parting thoughts, your final words, and of course, tell us where folks can get plugged in if they if they want to learn more, if they want to volunteer. But you know, what what parting words do you have for working class people here in Alabama and across the South? Well, I always viewed uh, Alabama and Mississippi as uh, ground zero for uh, struggle for freedom, and especially struggle for Black freedom, because if you can create a strong freedom movement in Alabama. And of course, that's what Martin Luther King, that's what Stokely Carmichael, that's what James Bell, that's what Frank Shuttleworth were able to do. And it was multiracial. Mississippi the same way. Well, I'm in Alabama right now. That uh, uh, I would say go cornellwest2024.com, become very much involved, either donations or volunteer. We're coming back to Alabama. We're going to be on the ballot. We, 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 we're going to follow through with, with the signatures required to be on the ballot. And we're just coming in the, in the name of truth, justice, and love. It is. I know it sounds very rare for a politician, but I'm not an ordinary politician. I'm a love warrior and a freedom fighter who spills over into politics. That's why I'm here with my dear brother Adam. I want to salute you, brother, because we're on the same love train. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And keep on riding that, with you, man. Keep on riding. That's brother. right. Keep That's on right. Riding. All right, y'all. You heard it. CornellWest2024.com. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project. And you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm.